Hello everybody, we are here at the Biennale and uh, we are here at the Pillar of Technologia. We are here with uh, a PhD student, which is uh, Malhan Nagar. Tell me if it's correct, uh, the yeah. pronunciation. It's, it's, yes. So how are you today? I, thank you so much for the kind introduction. I'm fine. And, uh, nice to be here, glad to be here. Okay. So I see that uh, you're a student in materials science and technology, but actually your, uh, your doctorate is not about it. Yeah. That's true. So my PhD is about biophotonics. So you use light for biomedical applications. And the main, so this is the broad field in which I'm working on. So the theme of my PhD is to design optical fiber pressure sensor for biomedical applications. Okay, it's kind of an interesting Interesting uh, because uh, I'm a field, biomedical yes. engineer. So uh, I'm very interested into this, this field of your PhD We, we had a program. student before talking about the optical fibers, so my yes. question is, what is the state of art at the moment? Uh, how is the uh, optical fiber employed in the biomedical applications? Uh, so maybe I tell a little bit about my PhD and which I'm working on, and then I can shift towards what's the state of the art, so it's more relatable. So the current topic which I'm working on, the objective of my research is to design uh, multi-point optical fiber pressure sensor. So it's not, it's sensing not only at a particular site, but at multiple locations. And the idea is to use it uh, to monitor various pressure indices inside the human body. So you kind of, um, let's say, for, for instances, we are applying this technology for two main applications. One is for the cancer diagnosis, and the other is for monitoring uh, or assessment of various vascular lesions, which are uh, uh, blood pressure abnormalities in your coronary arteries. So it's very, so for the cancer, I need not tell you that why it is so critical to monitor and why the early diagnosis is important. But uh, especially for the assessment of vascular lesions, blood pressure and more abnormalities inside your coronary arteries, it's very important because if you don't diagnose it at an earlier stage, it can lead to diseases, coronary artery diseases like ischemia, which is like a shortage of oxygen in your cellular metab metabolism because it's kind of reducing your blood flow at that particular site where you have blockages due to fat deposit and cholesterol. And diseases like angina, where you have chest pain, and under extreme circumstances, it can even lead to heart attack. So it's very important to monitor. And coming to your main question, which is uh, what is the current state of the art? So normally, for these kind of applications, electrical sensors are used, which are piezo-resistive sensors, but they cannot be used in all kinds of environments. For instance, uh, you can't use them. Then, when you're using MRI or CT scan because of the electromagnetic interference which is happening. So slowly the shift is happening from uh, electrical sensors, the technology shift is happening from electrical sensors to optical fiber sensors because they are lightweight, they have very small dimensions which is comparable to the strands of our hair and they can be easily integrated into medical devices. Uh, what mm, the main, I think the main problem is biocompatibility with this type of devices, uh, isn't it? The, the biocompatibility, um, compatibility, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. So biocompatibility, biocompatibility is one of the main issues because if uh, the pressure sensor is going inside your body, it has to be biocompatible because in case the optical fiber sensors as such are made up of glasses. So in case if there is, there is any chances of breakage, it can be toxic, uh, toxic for the body. So yeah, that's a, that plays a key role. Is that something you're working on, the materials with which they are Yeah, made? so um, so just to pretty briefly describe what exactly I'm doing and the above process for considering the example of, uh, let's say, assessment of vascular lesions. So what happens is this optical fiber goes inside a pressure guide wire. It's, it's like a metallic tube and it goes inside your coronary arteries where you have these blockages and you are monitoring the pressure because uh, it's very critical, as I explained, that, you know, so it gives the clinicians and doctors an idea that how severe that particular lesion is so that they can decide what is the future course of action. So it's very important that these optical fibers which, are, which, are, which we are using and the coatings which we are using are biocompatible. So that's one of the main challenges which we are facing and we are looking at.
uh, we know that uh, you uh, you were granted a fellowship that is dedicated to uh, Marie Curie, uh, the Nobel Prize uh, winning uh, uh, scientist. So I, I want to, I, I, I'm curious about what is this about and uh, how does it work uh, because it's uh, an uh, European uh, fellowship. Sure. Uh, so the PhD project which I'm working on, it's called FAST, P-H-A-S-T, which stands for Photonics for Healthcare, Multiscale Cancer Diagnosis and Therapy. So this is uh, funded by European uh, Union Horizons 2020 Research and Innovation Program under the Marie Curie Grant Agreement. And uh, there are 15 PhD students in this project. They are labeled as early stage researchers all across the Europe. And we work on various photonic technologies to combat cancer, so be it uh, cancer diagnosis, monitoring, or therapy. And coming to the question how I got this, so I got to know about this uh, position from a website called Uraxis and also from one of my close friends. And it involved two main, uh, two main stages. In the first stage, I had to write research proposals. Uh, about the position which I was applying for, my research experience, what's my motivation for this. And once I got shortlisted through that, then I went ahead for, then I got, uh, I had uh, two rounds of interviews. One was technical interview, which was based on the position I was applying and my research experience. And the second one was non-technical interview, which was based on soft skills, interpersonal skills, and problem solving skills. And fortunately for me, I got, I got through that as well, and now I'm here. Congratulations. I think it's time for a small pause and then we can come back. So we are still here in uh, uh, text field, uh, technology. You translated it. It's field of technology. Field of technology. Text field of students. Kind of nice. Uh, and uh, we are really curious about what's your uh, day to day uh, routine like. What's uh, the approach you take to the matter you're studying? And how, uh, uh, typical day of your PhD uh, uh, So the approach for tackling this kind of research problem, what we are doing is we are using a particular type of optical wavelength filter. Those are called fiber bracket gratings. And we are using customized fiber bracket gratings to uh, so that they, you can multiplex them, you can put it in a multiple point sensor, which can, as I was explaining to you, inside the pressure guide wire and you can continuously monitor the pressure index. So the, the central theme is that it can help for better patient care, uh, better patient health care because you are continuously monitoring the pressure, you reduce the procedural time and possibly it's more cheaper than vertical sensors. So the two main areas which I'm working on in my PhD is one is uh, in, on the design side. So you increase uh, the pressure sensitivity of uh, this device by working on transduction mechanism is how effectively you can convert the pressure to the strain and strain to the wavelength shift because this uh, fiber bag ratings are sensitive to the strain in the vicinity. So, and, so this is the design part. And the second part is to work on signal processing algorithms because how, how small changes in the wavelength can you measure? So these are the two points uh, which we are working on, and this is the research gap which uh, we are tackling right now. Because of with um, simple MEMS electronic mix, we have to sample the. You can extract just digital signals from MEMS inside the environment or human environment. Yeah, that's true. But uh, in the, in our case, it's it's not a MEMS technology here. Uh, that is also used in these kinds of sensors. Many, I think, Compsons Medical is uh, one of the companies which use this technology. But in our case, it's fiber bag rating, so it's it's more like a wavelength filter. So you track the wavelengths, and so pressure changes into the strain, and the strain is translated in the wavelength shift, and you measure this wavelength. So this kind of gives you an idea what was the initial pressure, and so. Uh, as I was saying, so 80% of my research is based on designing and developing these optical fiber sensors. And then I kind of do some theoretical and uh, computational simulations, which for me works as a benchmark to compare my experimental results and use these optical fiber sensors in phantoms, which as, uh, as you know are 
uh, simulated models which have human tissue-like characteristics. So to know, to test your sensor in real world scenario, how reliable they are. So yeah, so more or less, this is the work routine. And you have some goals during the day uh, yeah, yes. yeah. to reach. It's, it's really a, a nice, uh, nice field of research. And since you're a PhD student, and we could be uh, one day PhD students as well, uh, I wanted to ask you how is the PhD life and what are the plans after this uh, PhD? Oh, what's your background before asking? Uh, yes, before, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so I am a physicist. So I did my bachelor's and master's in physics. And then I continued to do my PhD here in biophotonics. And my interest is uh, in the field of optical fiber sensors and especially, and also in ultra-fast optics. So I was very keen when I got to know about this position and that's how I applied for it. Coming to the day-to-day -day PhD life, um, actually, honestly, it's quite interesting because if you see from a third person's point of view, even my friends tell me that don't you feel it's very monotonous, you are just being in the lab for several hours a day and uh, for a couple of years and being absent-minded most of the times. But it's quite interesting since it's very unpredictable. You never know how the day is going to turn out. As you said that you have a set of goals. Yeah, you have a set of goals, but yeah, you, yeah. it's very difficult to predict how the day is going to turn out. What you think can take a few minutes can turn out to be uh, very time consuming. You spend uh, several hours on them, especially if you are doing some experimental work. And if you are lucky, sometimes uh, once in a blue moon, things can work other way around as well. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's something quite interesting. And due to this, on a lighter, lighter side, you get to experience a wide range of emotions. Uh, <laughs> I can even the frustration, yeah, yeah, yeah. rage, anger, <laughs> yeah. rage. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, personally, for me, I would say the whole journey has been quite up uplifting because you like what you're doing, and you chose this, so you obviously like what you do. And since you read, uh, read a lot of literature, you have a central idea how to tackle this problem. So you believe in it. And then you keep iterating on it uh, while discussing with your supervisors, with your colleagues. And you build on it, you believe on it. And with the belief, you work for it. And with the belief that in whatever little way, however small it may be, you will be contributing something back to the society. So you have that sense of satisfaction with you when you when you go back. Yeah, so. I have this question. You, you come from the um, uh, bachelor degree in physics. Uh, are you scared about medicine, all this field? Because you spend your um, knowledge about physics, about, about, for example, light in this, in this field, in, this, in your PhD. But are you scared about medicine part or not? Yeah. At the beginning, not now, because now uh, you are very inside the... Brave. the <laughs> you are brave, yes. So I spent most of the time in the first year of my PhD just to know the biomedical application, especially because I'm working on cancer diagnosis and assessment of these vascular lesions. So you need to be familiarized with terminologies and what's happening. So I don't have a medical background as such, but I think I spent a sufficient time on it. And I also had some segments. Uh, which were part of the of this project, so it gave me kind of that exposure to build on that uh, kind of knowledge. I think that our time is up. Thank you for thank you, uh, thank us. you so thank much. Thank you, Malar. Glad to be here, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Have a nice day.